Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn about, weld joints in APS 650. A must know, before you design storage tank. Our flagship courses are, Master Static Equipment Design, and PVE Light, ASME Section 8 Division 2, and Master Welded Storage Tank, as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform for more details on scutoid.thinkific.com. Now there are some guidelines related to welds, vertical shell joints. These are the critical joints, vertical shell joints. Okay. Why these are the critical joints? One of the critical joints in storage tanks, vertical shell joints, circumferential stress. Okay. So that will be having your main stress part. Okay. So vertical shell joints shall be but joints always with complete penetration. Okay, so that is the requirement. So whatever long seams you are having, it has to be butt welded with complete penetration. Okay. You cannot just do lap welding and in the shells. You, that is not permitted. So that's some kind of like you can have a single V, you can have a single U type joint. This all will be decided by the welding engineers during the qualification process, it depends upon the thicknesses. The thicknesses are very high, then it's difficult to weld from only one side and achieve the full penetration. So you end up making double V. Again, if thickness is very high, then you prefer EU butt weld. Why? For very high thicknesses, you prefer U butt weld over V, less deposition of weld. Okay. If you make a V, you'll have to deposit a lot of welding. If you make a U, your deposit will be less. So less heat input. Okay? That is always preferable. Square groove, maybe for very less thickness, you can have follow this also. You don't have to make W. Now this is a circumferential joints. Circumferential joints, again, you may have when you are at the completely top of it, when you're talking about the topmost part of your tank, top shell, there, at the end, you provide a angle normally. The angle you can have like this. So you can, ha you can have a fillet weld. And then why we are having like this? Because there will be roof which will be coming. Okay, And you need an area to rest the roof. Roof plate, right? Makes sense what I just made? That sketch making sense? I'm talking about the topmost part of the shell. On that, just before welding the cone curl roof, if this part is not there, then imagine, you know, you have to align the conical roof with this shell which will be definitely very difficult this is called curb angle okay the name now you can note down this is called curb angle which is used to rest the conical roof okay you may have fillet weld kind of thing or you may have a complete penetration also you can directly but weld that conical roof. Okay. second is what we have used Conical roof coming on the outside, conical roof coming in the inside. Okay. First of all, uh, in this image, it won't be very clear, but I'll tell you exactly. Okay. So we are talking about this part, the topmost part okay. of the shell. So there, your shell will be coming like straight 
this will be ending like this okay now you need to weld conical roof with that isn't it so conical roof will be coming like this now imagine how difficult it will be to maintain the circularity of both shell and the conical roof so that you are able to weld are you able to imagine how difficult that will be no, because we are talking about 20 30 meter diameter okay. shell will be oval and also your conical roof will be oval okay you won't be able to weld it because there will be so much gap coming no, some places so instead of that what you do you instead of using I'll be having a shell. And then on that shell, I'll be welding a curb angle means it's simple angle. Okay, you might have seen an angle in the structural as a structural item, right? Use angles. Okay. So this is the angle. So if I weld this, then you have a larger area. Okay. On that, if the roof is coming like this. I can have a fillet welt. Okay. Make sense now? Okay, so now you can have the curb angle directly welded with a butt welt, or you can have a fillet welt like this. So curb angle can be outside, curb angle can be inside, both way. Other circumferential seams can be single V, can be double V. Okay. Now see that. Okay. Whenever for the circumferential joint, when we are making a double V, only on the top shell you are making the WEP. Bottom shell you are keeping straight. Okay. There is no WEP which is made on the bottom okay, so that you are able to rest it properly. Otherwise, again, it will become very difficult to weld. So these are the permitted joints for horizontal shell joints. Okay. In the bottom, bottom joints, you may have butt welded joints or you may have a lap. When we say lap joint, this is the roof to roof plate joints that also can be lap. Okay, this conical, conical roof getting attached with a curb angle. You can see that detail. Then you have bottom plate, okay. bottom plate having lap joint so lap joint means the plates will be coming on the top of each and then you weld it this is called tri-junction lap weld three plates coming together and making a lap welded joint now this is very important okay this image is very important it talks about details of a double fillet groove weld between the annular plate how many of you understand what is annular plate what is annular plate and what is bottom plate yeah so like it it, it is a bottom plate okay annular plate is also bottom plate but it the plate which comes under the shell that we call as annular plate now what might be the logic why to call it as annular as a separate name why to give that what is the difference between the plate which is coming under the shell and the plate which is just resting on uh, the later part of it so the stresses will be coming on that annular because that is where your shell plate is getting connected okay so the thicknesses or the stresses will be very high rest of the bottom plate is just resting there is no no stress at all okay only the stress is because of the static head which is very very less okay but on annular plate you may have higher stresses okay and because of that you may need higher thickness so for if i don't keep annular plate separate I ha I'll have to increase the thickness of the complete bottom plate, which will be a very costly affair for me. So instead of that, I'll just the change the part of 
the bottom plate which is coming below the shell i can optimize my cost okay so if this is the bottom plate and this is my shell which is coming okay so the thickness if it is exceeding i'll have to change the complete bottom plate so instead of that what i'll do i'll design that and under plate separately so even the thickness needs to be increased i'll just increase the thickness of the annular plate okay so now the guideline starts with this point itself okay so this is the first guideline you know what exactly here is that it is talking about for the nominal thicknesses of the shell plate which is greater than 13 mm and if it is getting connected with the annular plate this is the kind of joint which we need to maintain and what is that if you are having groove plus fillet then a plus b a plus b is equal to thinner of the shell or the annular plate whatever is the thinner okay so that much a plus b has to be maintained if uh, let us say shell plate is thinner and it's 20 mm thick then a plus b groove plus fillet at least you need to maintain 20 mm okay and in that a which is a fillet weld that itself should be at least 6 mm as a minimum and maximum it can go up to 13 mm so if a plus b is required as 20 because of the 20 mm thickness of that shell plate then if i'm maintaining the fillet weld as 13 my groove weld should be at least 7 mm okay make sense how you will be designing the joint for shell and the annular plate this is the typical joint which uh, you should follow for the and uh, shell getting welded with the annular plate okay. then you have butt welded joints bottom annular plate joints okay. we'll come back uh, for in the design we'll be using for even annular plate width calculation you may have to refer that roof and top angle joint okay that no. Now we'll talk about what exactly is frangible joint. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Uh, or the open open tank, you already know if there is no roof at all. Okay. So if there is not if the tank is not an open tank or a frangible joint, in that case, you should minimum have this much size of top angle, which is curb angle. So curb angle sizes okay so if my diameter of the tank is less than 11 meter at least 50 into 50 into 5 curb angle i need to use 11 to 18 15 to 50 into 6 greater than 18 75 75 into 10 these are the minimum sizes of curb angle 